2015. A developer wants nearly $200 million from taxpayers to help build a huge development of apartments and restaurants near Cherokee Park. WDRB investigators Travis Ragsdale and Chris Ots dig into what the One Park plan says it needs from the city. Hundreds of apartments, office space, restaurants, a hotel, a grocery store, all a part of the ambitious One Park project near Cherokee Park that's been talked about for years. I like the, the density of the project. I, you know, I think we need more of that in the community. Mobile uh, Metro Councilman Bill Hollander supported the sprawling project at the corner of Grinstead and Lexington. The plan was somewhat controversial, with some in the neighborhoods around it saying it was too big. But it was also touted as the type of development larger cities like Nashville and Indianapolis have. I think just because of the enormity of the one park project, I think there were questions in people's minds as to how it would be financed. Some of those questions were answered in a proposal floated by developers and obtained by WDRB. Jefferson Development Group, led by Kevin Kogan, says it needs $244 million of taxpayer money to complete the plan. Should the taxpayers be supporting this, this really pretty massive and grand development? The financing plan calls for creating a TIF, or Tax Increment Financing District. Here's how it would work. The developer would foot the bill for the upfront cost of the project. But then, any tax revenue created as a result of that project, the developer would collect 80% of that for the next 30 years. That amounts to $96 million from Louisville Metro and $148 million from the state. I have questions about whether this really qualifies for TIF funding. Developers call the area blighted and say it would not be developed unless there is a tax incentive like a TIF. The area contains one of Louisville's most popular steakhouses, Les Moon, a pure bar studio, and a successful coffee shop. It also includes a closed gas station. This area, while it could be improved, certainly, and I said that when we talked about this uh, during the zoning process, it's probably not its highest and best use. I think it's pretty hard to say that it's blighted or it can't be developed or wouldn't otherwise be developed. Jefferson Development Group declined to comment for this story. And so the net benefit... But Metro Councilman Marcus Winkler says he's all for the project and the plan to pay for it. What type of a city do we want to be? Do we want to be a city that attracts new people, new business, new opportunity, okay? Or do we want to be a city that stays the same or, or shrinks? In his mind, getting any taxes out of the project, even if it's just 20%, is better than nothing. The risk sits on the developer uh, because if there is no incremental value, then there is no uh, payout from the city. Uh, I think TIFs are a good way to spur development. Louisville is no stranger to TIFs. The KFC Yum Center and Omni Hotel are among many other developments that were funded in a similar way. Even Louisville's West End now has a TIF district aimed at sparking economic development. I would say that we need to be careful before we um, we improve any TIFs. And uh, I don't think we can be in a position as a city to have every developer come in and say, I won't build this, therefore it meets the but-for test, and so I don't want to pay my taxes. A TIF would have to be voted on and approved by Metro Council. A state tax incentive board would also have to approve the plan. I have lots of questions and I certainly would not support this at this point or sponsor it. Uh, I think it's the sort of development you see in lots of other growing cities uh, and, and I think it's a great addition. A development across Lexington Road called One Park North by the same developers is still waiting approval for a zoning change. A decision on that could come later this month. With photojournalist Darius Bowie, Travis Ragsdale, WDRB News.